Do you think an expert witness's job is different if it's a jury trial as opposed to a, a bench trial? The job isn't different. The method of doing the job is quite different. When you are talking to a jury as opposed to talking to a judge, you have a very different audience. First of all, it's, it's multiple people versus one. People from different backgrounds versus a lawyer. People who probably have never heard valuation theory in their life to somebody who may have done hundreds of valuation theory cases. So you have to understand the audience. And, of course, you know this before going in. And I gear those examinations, both on direct and cross, very differently. You want to make it very easy for the jury to understand. You don't want to talk down to anyone, but you want to make the theory simple enough so everyone can follow it. You don't want to get caught in jargon using terms, whereas in a judge, you can talk about cap rates and you can talk about Ibbotson and you can talk about lots of different things that the judge is going to know about. Jury will be lost in terms of that. So it's a completely different method of direct and cross, although the purpose is the same. So let's pretend now you, uh, you're you sitting in Dr. Laura's chair and you're giving advice to both attorneys and experts. First, what advice would you give for a financial expert? If a financial expert wants to get into this area, they need to have at least read the basic cases, statutes, and rules of court that are going to be operable in their area. And I admire experts because I spent 31 years litigating cases in New Jersey, and I think I'm pretty good about knowing what goes on in New Jersey. I don't really know what goes on in Iowa or Ohio or Texas or a lot of other states. Experts travel from state to state. Different rules, different procedures, different valuation theories accepted. They need to know all of that. Different standards of value accepted. They need to know all of that. But if you're going to be in a particular jurisdiction, you need to know that as an expert. Next, they should go to continuing legal education seminars. Hear what lawyers say about experts, how they go about valuating an expert, how they go about examining and cross-examining an expert. A lot of my lectures are attended by accountants, not lawyers. And I think that's a good thing to do. And then they should actually go in to trials and watch how other experts deal with issues. That will give them an experience because often they only see themselves and sometimes they're not even there for the other side. It would help if they see the entire construct so they can understand what is good and what is not so good. All right. What about uh, attorneys? What advice can you give to attorneys when cross-examining financial experts? Sort of the opposite. They need to go to lectures from accountants. I've gone to a lot of lectures from accountants to understand value methodology. And it is not something that you can just go once or twice to and see. You have to read the books, the, you know, the Shannon Pratt's of the world. You need to be able to understand what's going on. You obviously have to read the case law. You have to read the procedures. And you also, I think, need to have a basic understanding of the mathematical implications of things like normalization of income, tax rates, things of that nature. All of that gives you the tools, and they're only the tools, to ask the expert, your retained expert, the right questions. If I get them asking the right questions, I'm on the right wavelength, because I'm not going to know all the answers, but I want to make sure at least I'm asking the right questions. And the attorneys have to understand and go through I sort of have, you know, my my own Ten Commandments for lawyers in terms of cross-examination, things that they have to do. They have to know the business. They have to review the expert's past work. They have to review all the contractual agreements. They have to understand the methodology. They have to understand the standard of value. They have to understand objective versus subjective judgments and active versus passive factors. And within those areas, there's a thousand different things that they have to understand, but those are some of the basic things that they would have to understand. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today on Forensic Perspectives. Our guest today has been Mark Sobel of the firm Greenbaum, Rowe, Smith & Davis. If you have any questions on matrimonial and family law, I'm sure Mark will be happy to assist you. You can reach him at his Roseland office. His telephone number is area code 973-577-1780. As always, our audience is welcome to contact our offices with any questions or comments. Stay connected with us on the web at www.msgcpa.com, where you can also subscribe to our newsletter, Forensic Perspectives. We can also be found on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and of course by phone. We also have a blog also entitled Forensic Perspectives. Your suggestions for future broadcasts are always welcome. Until our next podcast, this is Mark Gottlieb 
Thank you for joining us. You have just enjoyed another episode of Forensic Perspectives, hosted by financial expert Mark Gottlieb. For questions and or comments regarding this broadcast, please feel free to contact Mark by phone at 516-829-4936 or via email at msgcpa at msgcpa.com. We also encourage you to visit our website, www.msgcpa.com. The opinions and commentary in the preceding program provided by our host and guests are for informational and educational purposes only and may not be their personal or professional opinion. No accounting, tax, or legal advice is being provided. The information provided within this broadcast is not an invitation for an attorney-client or accountant-client relationship. One should always seek the advice of competent professionals to assist in their specific needs. In addition, this podcast will not be updated for changes in accounting practices or law. As such, one should not rely on any information provided by this podcast. References to resources are provided solely for the listener's convenience. We have not reviewed or verified any information, advertising, products, resources, or other materials mentioned herein. This broadcast is copyright of Mark S. Gottlieb, CPA PC, all rights reserved. Any redistribution or reproduction of part or all of this broadcast is strictly prohibited unless authorized in writing.